when we, when we first saw the Demogorgon, there was something really incredible about seeing it physical. They originally came to us for the creature designs. We ended up helping them really design out the whole world, the upside down. And then that's the incredible thing, specifically with Stranger Things, because we had no clue if it was going to be any good or not. I'm Aaron Sims, the president of ASC that was founded here in 2005. It started off just me, and now it's over 35 people here in 2017. When I was a kid, I'd be doing these drawings, sketching either fantasy, like with a dragon, you know, creatures. And my friend Greg Punchett was uh, this incredible illustrator I worked for. They were just about to get into an, a new movie. He asked, we need a designer to design these creatures. He designed a lot of the creatures for this film, and the lead that was uh, running the show, he asked me if I could sculpt. And then they asked, could you mold, cast, you want to learn all this? And I said, yeah, well, teach me everything. During that time, I saw the industry start to change. There's a lot of people in the industry at that time that were afraid of it because they thought this was the end of, you know, what they did as a career. I was fascinated by just the aspect of something that wasn't physically there to come to life. Now, where we're at is visual effects. I do miss right now is touching clay. As films get more expensive to make, studios and investors want it to be cheaper. What I wanted was to find a process or a solution so I could do what I used to do. I wanted to get away from the whole, like, just everything being on a computer. So actually, the Duffer Brothers, uh, they originally came to us for the creature designs for the Demogorgon, but it ended up turning into a lot more than that. We ended up helping them really design out the whole world, the upside down. The, the Demogorgon specifically was really cool, and when we jumped into the, the design process, they had some kind of specific requirements. Basically, uh, there wasn't that much description in the script. The requirements really were that it was going to be a biped. It's actually going to be humanoid, very skinny, very thin, and uh, no face. What we ended up coming up with uh, was this really interesting concept where the, the head kind of flowered open. We did feel it was a unique kind of face, you know, for a creature, which is great. Actually, Aaron was the first one that sketched out pencil sketches to try and get an idea down. That was really interesting because then that allowed us to pass off that concept onto some of the designers. Because we had it in 3D, we um, immediately started looking at 3D printing and asset at the same time. Because we don't have the luxury to do a sculpture, it's because of time, and we basically pitch the idea, hey, we can make these maquettes. We can 3D print, they go, oh, really? It seems like a lot of producers and a lot of directors want to keep that aspect of the practical in play. People really want to keep the physical. We end up printing them, 3D printing them and painting them up and bringing them in these meetings. And Printing something off for clients really helps solidify that that concept is where they're going to go because they can see it in front of them, they can turn it around. They're going to spend a couple hundred million dollars on a film. They want to know that the design that they're picking is the correct one and oftentimes it really helps to see it in the round. The Demogorgon was one of the first prints that we did. The first results were just amazing. The detail, the level of detail in printers were like something that I couldn't even imagine that you could actually get in a printer. So now it's become like this, this norm for us. Going back to the days of when I used to sculpt with uh, clay and being able to see something and walk around it. It allowed us to get a tacit approval from the directors right off the bat. And then that actually even then further evolved later on, trying to figure out how that would actually work into production, how that would work into the physical asset, specifically as opposed to an entirely CG, uh, an entirely CG pipeline. The Duffer Brothers came back to us and uh, asked us to help out with uh, some specific CG shots to really bring it to life. The audience wants more, so you have to cater to that a little bit as you're creating this, and they realized that as they were moving on, it had to do things that a practical guy in a suit just can't do. It's interesting to kind of think about, especially as you know the printing technology gets better, as the materials get better, how that's going to play a bigger part um, in integrating with the digital stuff that we're doing. Already we're, we're trying to figure out ways of you know, blending the practical and the digital uh, as we move forward. So I think that was the real success story here, was, was how the two complemented each other. Sci-fi is, is now, because of these tools, you can create anything. Basically, the imagination is endless. And who knows where it's going to go in the future.